So we're going to look at a derivation of the remaining Fresnay-Soray formula as a kind of supplement. We already know that uh, the derivative of the unit tangent is uh, curvature times a length of r prime times n, the unit normal, and the derivative of the binormal is negative torsion times the length of r prime times n. Or again, if you're doing this in the context where you've reparameterized with respect to arc length, these formulas look much nicer, right? We have basically the derivative of t the unit tangent is just curvature times normal, and the derivative of the binormal is just negative torsion times the normal. But uh, we want to keep in mind our more general formulas that don't involve an arc length parameterization. Okay, so now keep in mind that... Um, we, we, so we want to see what happens with the derivative of, of uh, n. So n is a unit vector for all t, and this, again, by our important fact, is that, that uh, it's de um, perpendicular to its derivative. So we have that n and n prime are perpendicular. What that then means is that n prime, um, if we decompose it in our tnb frame, um, then it must be some copy of t plus some copy of b, right? It can't involve n at all because it's perpendicular to n. So we can decompose it into its tangential and binormal components. Now the question is, what are those things? Well, let's go ahead and take uh, t cross n and uh, differentiate it, right? So we have the binormal, you know, it's t cross n, and differentiate that, again, by the product rule. This is t prime cross n plus t cross n prime. As before, t prime is, n by definition is t prime rescaled, so these guys are parallel, and so that's zero. So we get t cross n prime. And, uh, and so now let's consider what happens if we take um, t and we cross product it with n prime. Well, let's see. What is that? Well, n prime we we have already discovered is some copy of t plus some copy of of b. So this would oh wait a minute. You know, t is parallel to its alpha t is parallel to t. So that cross product with that part yields 0. So this is just beta t cross b. But hold up, that that um, that's actually t cross b. Remember that, that we have this right-handed system, t, n, and b. So if you fight the circle, right, we're going from t to, to b, we end up with negative n. So this is negative beta times n. All right, but we already know, right, that beta prime by definition, beta prime, which is this, is, uh, well, or almost by definition, is negative tau times the length of r, r prime. So what can we conclude from this? Well, beta, apparently beta, is just torsion times the speed of our curve. Okay, well, that's a, a good start. Now let's see if we can say something about about alpha. Okay, well, okay, again, let's take n prime, and uh, now let's think about n. Well, let's come back to our circle here. T, let's see, b, b cross t gives us n, so we can rewrite n as b cross t, so n prime is b cross t prime. Again, using the product rule, we have b prime cross t plus b cross t prime. That's our product rule. And, uh, oh, well, we, we already know what beta prime is minus tau um, times the speed times n. So that would be cross t. So we just replaced what beta prime is. And uh, t prime, well, we already know that one as well, right? That's um, t prime is kappa, the curvature, times the speed times times n. Okay, so let's put this together. We have um, we have that uh, 
n n cross oops let me erase that Okay, referring again back up here, we have, we're trying to figure out what n cross t is. n cross t fights the circle, so that's minus b. And then we have kappa speed. What's b cross n? Well, b cross n, again, fights the circle, that's minus t. So, oops, undo that. So what do we what do we end up with? Okay, well we we end up with that n is minus curvature times r prime the speed times t. That's our alpha is is the minus curvature times speed, and then plus because notice there's two minus signs here, so we have plus torsion times speed times the binormal. So there's a nice formula there. That's the missing fresnay soray formula for us. And uh, it, with respect to arc length, we end up with a cleaner formula, because remember with respect to arc length, we have a unit speed curve. With respect to arc length, this just looks like um, negative curvature times t and torsion times b. In fact, um, with respect, well, Let's let's write down kind of the the summary of, of the Frenet Serre formulas. And I'll write them down um, first kind of the full form for a general parameterization. We have T prime is uh, kappa speed n n prime is minus kappa speed t plus torsion speed b and then b prime oops there's a missing a prime there b prime is minus torsion speed n and if we do with respect to um, arc length so if we write everything in terms of arc length there's, it cleans up all the speeds, the length of our primes are 1. And in fact, I can, let's write this down in a kind of a matrix form, if we're familiar with that. Uh, DTDS, DNDS, DBDS, right? This is the derivative of the T and B frame with respect to arc length. It has this nice form. We have T of, of S, N of S, B of s there and uh, what's the transformation between the t and b frame and its derivative well we have zero kappa zero negative kappa zero tau and then zero negative tau zero so we get a skew symmetric matrix and uh, this has various interesting consequences and uh, very interesting things if we study differential geometry that's uh, rather important and there's generalizations of this to higher dimensions